Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Doctor Movie, and we are continuing our bat crap crazy week of uh, movies that are just almost too bizarre to even explain. Uh, and this one, this one's a real doozy, folks, because uh, it's it's kind of what we call a lost movie. It's uh, been rediscovered. Um, and re-released, but it originally came out in 1979, and just the story behind this one, and I don't know it all, but this movie is one of those that, I don't know, it's hard to even figure out what all happened here, (laughs) so uh, we are talking about from 1979, so you know me, that's my sweet spot, that late 70s theatrical experience right before the VHS boom, Uh, 1979's The Visitor, Um, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of infamous in ways, Uh, like I said, a lost movie, it was totally forgotten about, never really released on VHS or anything, I don't think. Uh, I think Alamo Draft House found it and, and bought the rights to it and re-released it. And now it's uh, considered a, a cult classic just because of just how bizarre everything is in this. Um, <laughs> and the other thing about this is the cast, right? I mean, the director is an Italian director, so there you go. Extra bonus points for me. Um but this cast is almost legendary. I mean, you would think when you hear this lineup, you were going to hear about, I don't know, the Poseidon Adventure or some, some major blockbuster because it's just mind-boggling that these people are in this movie. But uh, let's, let's get to the synopsis, right? Because like, like that won't be weird enough to hear the cast check this out (laughs) an ancient intergalactic warrior arrives on earth to put a stop to a demon uh, demonic child's plot to reproduce Satan's next generation of evil I don't even get that much out of it um they 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 take the words and change them just enough to keep it from being Satan, it's it's Satine, I believe, that they use in this, and yeah, uh, an intergalactic warrior, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> so this is one of those. Uh, it's it's an American international film, so that kind of tells you what you're getting here. It's going to be a little light in the loafers, I guess, but. Uh, always going to be a little off kilter, you know, that's just kind of how their films were, especially in this time period, but let's check out this cast, shall we? First and foremost, again, I can't get over this cast, it's just, it's just blows my mind. Our, our intergalactic hero is played by John Huston. Yeah, that John Huston. (laughs) It's just like, how's this even possible? Um, this movie has Glenn Ford in it. Glenn Ford is probably in my top three actors of all time. Uh, for you that don't know who he is, he was in a ton of westerns back in the day. But he's, uh, he's Superman's earthly father in Superman the movie, right? He's, uh, he's, uh, Kent, you know, the dad that, you know, they find the meteor and pick up Superman great actor. I mean, the guy's been in a ton of stuff, but I've just always been a fan of just just his acting. He's fantastic. We got a young Lance Hendrickson in this. 
That's right, folks. We're just getting through the three, the first three people on the list. Um, Lance Hendrickson's in this. What can you say? It's Lance Hendrickson, right? So you know it's gonna, it's gonna do well. Sam Peckinpah <laughs> as one of the doctors. I mean, again, every one of these names, legendary, every one of them. Shelly frickin' Winters is in this movie. <laughs> I mean, it just blows my mind. This cast is like, I'm telling you, this is blockbuster, 70s blockbuster material as far as a cast. Uh, we got Franco Nero in this. Now, he is the Italian equivalent to half these people we're talking about. You may know him as the original Django. Uh, that's kind of what brought him to fame. Uh, he was also in Enter the Ninja. That's right, the, the canon Golden Globus movie that kicked off the whole ninja craze. Uh, yeah, Franco Nero. I mean, again, a legendary. Um, and to top it off, we got Mel Ferrer. This guy's been in everything, right? So, again, uh, you know, and that's not it. I mean, there's a, there's a ton more in this. But that's your big ones. Um, what, a, what a movie, folks. I mean, this one really doesn't make a lick of sense. It starts off, it looks like somebody trying to rip off a Ken Russell type movie. Maybe in a Jodorowsky movie. It's got this weird surrealism to it where obviously it's a a tank, a fish tank full of ink or whatever that's floating and it creates the skyline, which looks a lot like the skyline if you remember in Flash Gordon. It was very liquidy looking. That's what this looks like. And you got John Houston standing here in a desert and the sun comes down level with the ground and a figure steps out of the sun and they face each other and it's, it's a caped figure and you can't see its face and this big blizzard starts happening. <laughs> That's the kind of movie we're talking about, folks. And there's not a word of dialogue here. And uh, the wind starts blowing and it starts getting real snowy and John Houston's character is trying to see what's going on and all of a sudden the cape figure, you see the the... the the face being revealed and it's of this little girl and her eyes are all bugged out and kind of creepy looking and then it just cuts to Franco Nero sitting down with extra long hair talking to a bunch of bald headed kids in this room that you're going to have to assume is just in outer space they're on a different planet, different galaxy whatever I'm just assuming that's what it is even though everything they have looks very very 1970s you know, home ec. <laughs> you know, regular opening doors, palm tree kind of plants, and he's sitting on this, you know, luxurious kind of multi-piece couch, talking to these kids about the legend of, you know, this character, uh, Jersey, and the, the, the story of Satine, who left this planet and went to Earth, and got in a big battle. He was coming to take over the earth, right? And uh, then uh, there's I don't know, I guess the story is a bunch of birds a, a lot of a lot of these bald-headed kids turned into birds <laughs> and went and attacked him and uh, only three survived but they end up beating up Satan. Then Satan uh, gets it on with some human women and creates some some devil babies and what this movie's going on is you know John Houston's just been you know briefed through this nightmare or whatever he had that he knows exactly who to go after on earth so he makes the trip to earth to fight Katie Collins a little I don't know 10 11 year old girl we get introduced to her by, it's a, there's a basketball game in Atlanta, Georgia. And they're in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, Lance Hendrickson sitting there, and he's the owner of the team. And he's got a new girlfriend who uh, is Barbara Collins. So she's the mom of Katie. 
right? Now, Barbara Collins, I didn't bring, I didn't bring up uh, Joanne Nail in this. Joanne Nail, uh, again, an- another actress. When you see her, it's like, hey, that's the that's the lead girl from Switchblade Sisters, right? And uh, again, that's just because I, I know these movies. But uh, this is a really good role for her. But uh, they're wa- they're there watching the ball game, and their team is getting beat. And then Katie, the little girl, goes up and sits right on the sidelines of the court. And uh, they obviously get this basketball player on another team called Abdul. I don't know who they're aiming at there, right? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I'm, I would imagine. And uh, it comes down to the last seconds of the play, and Abdul gets the ball, and he goes to slam dunk it, and an explosion happens. And it keeps him from making the shot. So Katie uses her powers, I guess, to make an explosion happen on the court and keep him from winning the game. <laughs> I mean, couldn't she just, like, made him trip or something like that? I don't know. Just anyways. And then later on that night, Lance Henderson's in bed with with the mom, uh, Joanne, well, uh, Barbara in this case. And she's even bringing up, wow, wasn't that wild that we had that explosion in the middle of the game? I'm like, Really? And, and it didn't make headline news that night that there was a bizarre explosion. It's just kind of like, yeah, they just kind of pass it off. Um, so you kind of see this girl slowly losing, using her powers. Uh, this has a very kind of exorcist, omen, um, what else? I, you can tell this is kind of what they're going it's, it's like an, an intergalactic version of... Of the Exorcist or the Omen. I, again, yeah, that, that's why that's hard to talk about this movie because it don't make a lick of sense, right? And uh, John Houston's coming to Earth to stop her. Uh, she's having a birthday party, and her aunt picks out this nice little kind of peacock toy at a store, and they they gift wrapped it. And they give it to her on her birthday, and when she opens it up, there's a there's a handgun in it instead. And the little girl pulls out the handgun and, like, throws it in front of her mom or throws it behind her mom, and it goes off and shoots her mom in the back and paralyzes her mom. This is all intentional, by the way. Because she even tells her mom at one point, I'm going to have to hurt you eventually because you leave me here by myself with this babysitter who passes out all the time, and I don't like it. Because, you know, Barbara's all wrapped up in getting with Lance Hendrickson. Well, if that wasn't bizarre enough, you got Lance Henderson that gets called in the Mel Ferrer's office, and apparently they are some, I don't know, cult? But there's a whole bunch of these guys, right? They're sitting at this huge, like, business, corporate business table. Mel Ferrer's at the head of it. Lance Henderson walks in, they're like, look, dude, we've given you everything we can give you on Earth you know, all the riches that, that you've asked for. You have to have a baby with this woman. We want the demon child that, you know, there has to be a second one. Why? No idea. That's just the story here, folks. So he's trying to, you know, do the deed here. And he's wanting her to marry him, and she won't do it. And uh, he can't, uh, I guess he's not getting her pregnant. And... They're like putting him on, putting his feet to the fire. Say, look, man, you got to do something here, because uh, we're running out of time. We're running out of patience. And uh, <laughs> there's your storyline. Um, you got Glenn Ford as an investigator because of the shot that happens to the mom. She gets shot in the back. He's investigating what happened, and things just get weirder and weirder. And the more he investigates, the more he gets in the middle of everything, and then. Uh, ends up getting killed in a car crash. It burns and, and he dies. I mean, <laughs> and then Shelly Winters becomes a, a, a housekeeper. She comes and takes care of the house because now Barbara's not able because she's in a wheelchair. And uh, Shelly Winters calls it as it is. She knows that the little girl is evil, right? She can tell. Well, come to find out, by, by the time it's all said and done, Shelly Winters is working with. John Houston. Uh, what was his name? Jersey. Why is his name Jersey? Don't know. 
Is it a play on Jesus? I don't know. I mean, we got Satan in Jersey and Abdul. <laughs> you know, again, movie makes no sense. Anyways, again, it just keeps getting weirder as it goes, right? Because John Houston lands on Earth and he brings a bunch of bald headed guys with him and they all are on this rooftop in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know if this is just where they work out or they're planning their attack. I don't know. But they're on this rooftop and they're setting up these, looks like projector screens. I, again, I have no idea. No idea what's going on here. Obviously, they're there to try to, you know, take care of business. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> there's there's no words for it, folks. Uh, it's just, it, it's such a bizarre film with this cast. Um, but, uh, you know, they do all the things you do. Of course, obviously, Barbara comes from wealth, right? Because her house is top-notch 1979. And they, of course, they get her a staircase. It's got the electric, you know, uh, the electric staircase that she can go up on in a wheelchair and all that stuff, trying to make her mobile. But uh, the daughter just keeps getting weirder and weirder, and she's being followed by, you know, Glenn Ford there for a while, and she, like, cusses him out right before she goes to school. And uh, she's, a, she's a mean little thing, man. And she goes out ice skating. Her mom goes to the mall, and she takes her mom, and she's all happy, happy-go-lucky with her mom around. And then when she's not around, she's something else. But she's out here ice skating, and she's doing some crazy Peggy Fleming crap out here, man. 11-year-old kid doing some top-notch crazy ice skating. And for some reason, she makes these boys that are there mad, and they all start chasing her. And she outruns them. She outskates them. They're sliding, hitting her heads on the walls. You know, typical, you know, she's got superpower kind of things, right? Well... Again, this this all comes down to John Houston coming face to face with her and having a battle. And uh, again, she's she's trying to kill her mom because her mom won't have a baby because she she specifically asked for a, a little brother, a little sister, right? I think she says a little brother. So it's almost like she knows this is supposed to happen too, right? Because she's tied into Satine, I guess. Um, and again, the mom doesn't want to. And then there's this weird scene where the mom is driving this really nice Thunderbird from back in the day. I have to say, it's pretty sharp. And her car stalls. The little girl's in the back. And all of a sudden, this big truck pulls up. And they pretty much kidnap the mom and the girl and impregnate her. <laughs> yeah. On the side of the road, Mel Ferrer. Because, again, Lance Henderson can't get the job done. Matter of fact, they send him away because he's just not getting it done. So they, they put him on a on a plane and get him out of there, if they really do or not. Who knows? But uh, he's gone. She gets kidnapped, gets impregnated. She goes to her doctor. Something's happened, and I don't want this baby. So they have an abortion, and... Uh, when she gets back home, obviously the daughter knows what's happened. And lo and behold, Lance Hendrickson's there too. And they're both angry at her. And they're going to kill her. And when all that's going on, John Houston's on the rooftop of this building with some special effects. And these, I don't know, these circle lights that are blue start circling up in the sky. And they come down and land on the top of the building, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if it's just showing that it's a sign that everything's about to happen or what. Actually, the lights turned into a bunch of birds. This movie is all about birds, man. It's all about a falcon and a hawk and an eagle and, you know, there's a lot of stuff here. And uh, then all of a sudden when the daughter is trying to kill her mom. Uh, well, Lance Anderson's trying to kill her, too. On the staircase. Um, I don't know. Several hundred birds come in the house and start attacking the girl. And then a bird fixture? Almost like a D 
decorative piece of art starts attacking Lance Hendrickson? I seriously, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, when it's all said and done, the little girl's dead. I guess. I don't know. It looks like it. And John Huston saves the day. And he goes back, and, and I, I guess the beginning of the movie is also like the wraparound, right? Because when he walks in, Franco Nero still gives him the same look and kind of smiles and nods at him. And that's this movie. <laughs> this movie is 100% bizarre. It definitely belongs on this list of bat crap crazy movies. And I didn't do a good job explaining it. I don't think you can. But this thing is on Tubi. You can check it out. Uh, it's worth seeing just to say that you did. Because I, I don't know that there's another movie like it. And where else are you going to see this kind of lineup in a movie that just makes no sense, man? It's, it's like a bad fever dream put on film with this incredible cast. Again, mind-boggling that this thing was even made in the first place, right? So, uh, that's pretty much my take on this one. What do I rate this one? Uh, this is my second time watching this movie. And I enjoyed it even the second time. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna give it a four. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. But there is, again, this, this movie makes no sense. Don't go trying to watch it and trying to make it make sense because you're going to fail. <laughs> I'm just telling you. So there you go, folks. That is The Visitor, 1979. Uh, I think you ought to check it out if you're into <laughs> into these kind of movies that you just go, I don't know what I just watched, but it was pretty awesome, right? All right, folks, that's it for this one. We will check you later. Dr. Boobie!